بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلوات الله وسلامه على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد المصطفى وعلى آله ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وما بعد التفضيل lesson S012 comparative and this is also uh, would be used as superlative the equivalent of superlative in uh, English. So the definition of a tafdilu is ismu tafdil is ismun masoogun ala wazni af'al liddalalati ala anna shay'ayn ishtaraka fi sifatin wa zada ahaduhuma ala al-akhari fiha. So ismu tafdil is a word, a name placed in the pattern of af'al or the feminine fa'ala to indicate that two things share a common attribute and that one exceeds the other in it. For example, uh, hasanun, we say, hadha shay'un hasanun wa hadha ahsanu wa hadhihi husna. Sorry, al husna. Al husna. Kabirun, we say هذا Kabirun, this is big. وهذا أكبر وهذه الكبر. This is big, this is bigger, and that one feminine is the biggest. Fadlun, uh, Fadlun mean to be honorable uh, or to be superior, and we say Afdalu is more superior. Are the most superior, and the feminine is al fudula, al fudula. Now, an observation to make is that while in English we have both comparative and superlative, which is to say, to compare, we say this is good, but this is better, and that is best. We don't have that in Arabic. In Arabic, we only have comparative. So we say this is good. And this is better than. And the way we would make it superlative is, is to say better than everything. And that would make it superlative. The comparative words have four states. There are four states for the comparative words. And I have them here in a chart. Uh, number one, it does not have the definite article al and is not possessed, not moved off. In this case, it is singular masculine, and the thing compared to it is mentioned after the preposition. So in all of these four states, we would be observing whether the word has alif and lam on it, the, and whether it's in a state of idafa. So the ismu tafdeel, it's very important that whether you use the singular or the masculine, that you uh, observe whether it has alif and lam or not, or if it's possessed or not. If it does not have the alif and lam, al, and it is not possessed, meaning it's not mudaf with a mudaf ilai, in that case, it would always be singular masculine. And the thing compared to is mentioned after the preposition min. For example, Allah says in Quran, Indeed, this Quran guides to that which is most upright. So we see the word aqwam does not have alif and lam, and it is not mudaf. Hence, it is singular masculine. And the thing that it is most upright or more upright than is not mentioned here in this ayah but it is understood. So what this ayah means 
إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوام من كل شيء من كل شيء So it is mentioned uh, indirectly or without being written or without being said It is understood Another example وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَثُ مَّا يُعِيدُهُ وَهُوَ أَهْوَنُ عَلَيْهِ And he is the one who begins the creation, then he repeats it. وَهُوَ And it is easier upon him. It here, وَهُوَ refers to al-i'ada or repetition of the creation so allah is the one who begins the creation allah continue to create and he continue to begin the creation that's why allah says yabida ul khalqa begins the creation allah continues to create uh, and he creates what you do not know there is the potential that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created before this universe of ours, other universes, and that in parallel he created other universes and continues to create them. The capabilities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are limitless. So that's why Allah says, Ya ul khalqa, using the present continuous tense, which means he continues to begin creations and then repeats them and then he repeats the creation so it is something he keeps doing then allah says wahua and repeating it is easier upon him huh it's easier upon him excuse me what is on the what is meant by that easier than beginning it just to, to initiate a creation relatively speaking is more difficult than to repeat it because you have already done it once but of course do not understand from this do not understand uh, that this implies that starting the creation is difficult for a lot no that was easy also but this is easier huh this is easier because allah already did it before but relatively speaking everything is easy for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why the word ahwanu, not having alif and lam, and not being mudaf, must be singular masculine. So that's the first state of the comparative word. The second, it has the definite article al. So if it has the al, in this case, it functions as an adjective. And like we have studied in our, in our sifa, and our sifa tatatba'ul mawsufa fi arba'a, that the sifa follows the mausuf, the adjective follows the words that it describes in four things, in four functions. And we will examine uh, those functions in this example here. <clears throat> so let's look here in this ayah. <laughs> and for him, that's Allah, is the most elevated of analogies in the heavens and the earth. Al-Mathal al-A'la, the greatest of analogies. So we have the word al is uh, is a noun. Al-A'la is the sifa. So ism al is used as a sifa, as an adjective, and it has alif and lam. Or in fact, it's the other way around. It has alif and lam, hence it, is, it functions as a sifa, as an adjective. And the adjective follows the noun that it describes in four things. Let's examine those four things in this example. Al-mathalu is singular, therefore al-a'ala is singular. Al-mathalu is masculine, hence al-a'ala is masculine. Al-mathalu has alif and lam, it is mu'arraf. Hence, al-a'la is mu'arraf and al-mathalu is uh, marfu'ah. Hence, al-a'la is fi mahal al-raf. Why did I say fi mahal al-raf and not marfu'ah? Is because it's mabni. 
Al A'la is on the pattern of Af'alu. Af and here, because of Alif Maqsura, because of this Alif that is written as a Ya, it is Mabni. Hence, we do not say it is Marfu, we say it's in Alamatul, it's in Mahal al Rafa. Fi Mahal al Rafa. So it agrees in all of those four things. Another example Allah says, oh, sorry. Uh, this is not an ayah. This is an example that I uh, I, I made. Ad-Darul Kubra Jamilatun. Ad-Daru means the house, and the word Ad-Dar is uh, feminine. This is what uh, feminine ma'nan uh, laysa lafdan. Feminine according to the mean uh, the meaning, not the laf, not the word. And al kubra has alif and lam is its mustafdil and it describes a dar hence uh, it agrees with a dar in four things let's examine them a dar is singular therefore al kubra is singular a dar is feminine hence al kubra is feminine a dar is mu'arrafun hence al kubra is mu'arraf and a daru is marfuun hence al kubra is fi mahal al rafa fi mahal al raf because it's mabni and Jamilatun is Khabar. The third state of the comparative word, it is possessed by an indefinite word. In this case, it is singular masculine. It is mudaf ila kalimatin nakiratin. For example, Allah says, وَلَلْأَخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ دَرَجَاتٍ so we have the word, oh, let me translate the ayah first. And indeed the akhira, that's the next life. Akbaru darajatin is greater levels. Wa akbaru tafdila and greater superiority or honor. So let's look for ismu tafdil here. So we have ismu tafdil akbaru. And here, uh, it is mudaf. Here it is mudaf. Akbaru is mudaf. Darajatin is mudafun ilay. And darajat is uh, is a nakir is nakira, meaning it has the tanween that is a sign of a tankir. It is not ma'rifa. So akbaru is possessed by darajat. In this case, the word akbar must be singular. In this case, it must be singular. Now there is another ismu tafdil here, akbaru tafdila. Akbaru here is not an example for the third case. Just the first one is an example. And just so that you know, uh, the word akbaru here is ismu tafdil and the mufaddal min who should have been mentioned. Excuse me. Akbaru min ad-daril min min ad dunya min ad-daril dunya tafdilan. So the akhira is greater levels and greater than the dunya in superiority, meaning it's more superior than the dunya. The i'rab of tafdila, uh, we studied it in al-asma'u al-mansuba or al-mansubat min al-asma'i. It is tamyiz. It is called tamyiz, differentiating. It is greater than the dunya in what? In superiority, in honor. Meaning you'd be honored more uh, in the akhira uh, than in this life. Of course, this ayah is talking about the believers. The fourth state, fourth and final state of the comparative word is that it is possessed by a definite word. So here the mudaf ilai was indefinite. If the mudaf ilai is definite, in this case it agrees, it can agree, in this case it can agree or be masculine or feminine. There's supposed to be or here. Let me explain what that means. So we have the example, this is from Quran, Surah, Surah to Luqman. Indeed, the most despicable, 
of voices is that the voice of the donkey the most disliked the voice is the voice of the donkey uh, this ayah by the way is not intending this uh, uh, it, it intends it metaphorically symbolically meaning that when we speak to people, we be gentle in our speech. We don't be harsh in our speech. Otherwise, we are like the donkey. So the word ankar is mudaf. And al-aswat is mudaf ilay. But al-aswat is mu'arra. Different from darajat, which is nakira. So therefore, in this case, we can say uh, ankar. You can say anchor or you can say uh, nukro, nukro. So it's okay for us to say, now we can't change the Quran, but linguistically speaking, it would have been correct to say, inna ankar al aswati la sautul hamir, or inna nukro al aswati la sautul hamir. So both are correct. An example of that. Uh, that I just made up uh, and of course there's difference of opinion concerning the the fact of this, <laughs> this statement but I just believe this uh, uh, at least in her lifetime when she was there there are those who say of course that Maryam is and we could probably write that here that's not my intention just this is just grammar. Aisha to Rabbi Allah and her afdal nisa. So because the word afdal is mudaf and a nisa is mudaf un ilahi and it's ma'arifa, it's ma'arraf. Therefore, it's okay for you to say afdal or fudla. Afdal or fudla. Aisha to afdal nisa or fudla nisa. Fudla nisa. So both are correct.